name is Byron Miller. I've uh, been using Puppet for a few years now, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the story, how I got got started, and what I think the, the biggest factors to success were uh, for me. Um, again, I'm at Homepoint. Uh, we are hiring, so uh, I say that everywhere I go, but it's an awesome place to work. Uh, we also have the Austin Puppet User Group that we host at Homeway, which is on the second Tuesday of every month. And we have it as, generally at 6.30, but we're having it tonight, so tonight is the second Tuesday, so I bumped it up to 7, so I can call it over after this. Uh, but we meet up, uh, we talk about all sorts of things, everything related to Puppet, uh, everything uh, comparative, uh, configuration management systems, and uh, uh, invite everyone to come up and hang out. Again, easily to remember, second Tuesday of each month. It's on meetup.com, just search for Austin Puppet User Group. And you'll see us there, bring in pizza, drinks, sodas. So it's a good time just to hang out and talk shop. And basically, I got started with Puppet and the Enterprise, uh, doing lots of Oracle stuff. Everything, every Oracle product you could imagine, um, the place had it. More of Agile, ERP, database. Every version of the database, Oracle oh. Enterprise Linux, and I needed a way to support all this massive infrastructure while not babysitting things around and able to free up some time because I spent every Monday cloning off all these environments and tooling new things so that you know the more important business analysts could do their job. Uh, and I needed to kill technical debt, so I went down the rabbit hole learning Puppet beyond just kind of testing on the lab environment. So. Uh, kind of where my experience comes from. And just because I like to steamroll through things and forget that not everybody's on the same page, I wanted to talk about some of the definitions and common things that we have, uh, and some of what you'll hear, I'm sure, off and on, or what you've already heard today. Um, one thing, uh, conversion is a popular word, and people say their nose converge is when things normalize over a period of time, or they stabilize. Uh, some. Some people have had to run Puppet multiple times to get things to converge. If you have different applications that you need configuration to run, M Collective helps satisfy some of that where you can proactively do your uh, conversions. And uh, they have some cool new stuff that they're working on uh, that hopefully makes this better. Uh, item potent, a big thing you'll hear off and on is that when you, uh, you can run your Puppet runs all the time and it won't change something that doesn't need to be changed. Uh, it's not gonna, you know, you shouldn't have a catalog say I have 45 changes every time it runs. And the notorious issue with this is people that I used to exec statements and stuff like that that didn't check for the necessity to run an exec. So every time you look at your puppet dashboard, you see uh, something's changed even though nothing really changed. So item focus is a good thing to remember as you're building your systems. Uh, orchestration is just a vocabulary of how you can do your convergence on scale. Um, Puppet provides M Collective. I know some people that have uh, used other tools like Ansible to do their orchestration for Puppet runs, and uh, you can get pretty, pretty creative. And when I say Puppet, I just say the entire ecosystem. I'm not speaking of you know, Puppet Masters, Puppet Agents, or anything like that. So if you have concerns or questions about a specific piece I've mentioned, feel free to raise a hand and let me know. And manifest and modules, I just call that the code. Um, that's the stuff you're writing to get going. And more stuff. I mean, uh, Deepak briefly talked about it. The ENC, a lot of people use this uh, generically, is the external node classifier, which is uh, Puppet, Deep, Puppet Enterprise has their new uh, rules based one. Uh, the open source is based on uh, older key value pair kind of association. Uh, there's also the foreman, which a lot of people have used, uh, that has its own take on the ENC and how to classify things and smart variables and stuff like that. M Collective is just the name of the tool, Marionette Collective. Uh, Hire is something you'll probably hear about or may have already be using. Uh, it's just a simple key value lookup system uh, that defaults to YAMLs when you're out of the box. Uh, I'm not a big fan of having 5,000 YAMLs everywhere, so I use like the the SQL connector and things like that. And then you can tie it in GPG for encrypting some of your key value pair secrets and things. <coughs> so uh, node uh, is just an agent node. Uh, so whenever you hear people talking about nodes, it's usually the 
a server or the VM instance of Puppet that's running and has a classification associated with that node. And Factor is just a cool tool that builds up all of the facts that you can extend so you can customize facts. Um, it's just the name of when the Puppet runs on the agent, it files the catalog, it consumes all those facts and reports that back to PuppetDB. And it's just through Factor. So you can log into your boxes and run Factor and see that same information. And uh, the types and providers are basically everything that you can declare in Puppet. Um, the built-in resources um, that they provide, and then you can also uh, expand upon these with custom uh, providers through the module. <coughs> and for me, theory is where it all starts. Uh, I've done lots of implementations of Puppet, Puppet environments, and every one of them has come to bite my butt, where <laughs> we went to a dev, and that became production after, you know, without any experience and actually building it up, working on methods to define what it is um, and productize it. So yeah, for us three years, four years, theory is where I've learned it's the best place to start. And in that response, uh, you know, just think about your system and think about what Puppet's role is in your environment. Um, you know, there's a learning curve in Puppet, but it, when, when you get over the hump of understanding the vocabulary and stuff, it's fairly simple. Um, you know, the, uh, what is it, the uh, types of providers, there's a single page list of the ones that are built in, so you kind of have like a puzzle that you can build from those, and you can embrace them. So there's, you know, learning the vocabulary isn't the hardest part of Puppet from my experience. It's uh, thinking about how you work, what's important, what roles Puppet trying to satisfy your environment, and, you know, where you are and where you want to be, and having that in mind as we uh, plow through. Uh, EPAC covered some of this, you know, the, some stuff is uh, on the docs, and the docs are really well kept. Uh, if you have any feedback, you can get on the Google groups, and, uh, you know, uh, they have a very good discussion going on on what people think of the docs and where they're going, so you can give a, a good feedback. And the most often the page I use is the types and provider page, just to make sure everybody's working the same ideas because one of the things I don't want people doing is reinventing the wheel for everything. So it's nice to use what Puppet's already written. Um, getting started is define your goals. Um, automation is a big thing, but automation just is, you know, it doesn't create value in itself. Uh, you know, some people automate themselves out of a job. You know, what, what, did, you, what did you do there? Um, whenever you start building the system now, how do you measure success or failure? How do you measure that you're, what you are automating and what you are using configuration management to handle is actually creating value, uh, helping you, you know, do you have more free time or are you spending more time managing Puppet now? Uh, are you testing through things and working to build a system that you can rely upon? And then what is your intent? And Puppet's all about intent and describing where you want to be. And basically just know the theory of your desired state. Uh, one thing that's always super important is where you work has a big role in how your Puppet will end up. Uh, you know, if you're working at a bank that's high constrained, highly ordered, your Puppet isn't going to look like, you know, me at home away where I have a little more flexibility and I'm not dealing with customer data or a healthcare facility. <laughs> So those things will decide, uh, you know, what your ultimate infrastructure and the capabilities of public would be like, and the whole workflow of taking something from idea to formalization ends up being. Um, you know, some people have it with compliance. Uh, you know, do you need the auditing? Uh, it's the most important thing to be your public dashboard, and you know, the automation is just the uh, icing on the cake for you guys. You know, how do you sell that to your business? Uh, stability losing, are you guys preparing to put out fires? Uh, you know, working on uh, projects, uh, huge technical debt. So if you're trying to bring that down, make sure you capture all those points. So when you when you start implementing Puppet, you have a, a plan and a workflow uh, to get things done. And for me, the this is probably one of the most important things to keep in mind as you build things out because uh, sometimes I'll. Uh, start and just dive in and make things crazy complex out the door because I think it's easy for me, but I, you know, not worrying about everyone else that has to use it, uh, you know, 
developers, the business analysts, product managers, the QA people. You know, I want all of them to understand either what Puppet can give them so they stop asking me for the things that Puppet can give them, or you know, I want it to be easy that everybody can extend and embrace. Uh, another thing that's huge is I want it to be safe. Um, you know, we, we started out with uh, our safety was get you know, version everything, so if you push out code that does break something, you can just revert it back, push it back out. Uh, if you have M collective, that's super simple. Otherwise, sometimes you might have to wait 30 minutes or whatever your node check-ins are for conversions. Um, so safety is a huge thing. And not safe as in fear to make changes, but safe in that you know you can rely on your changes and your mechanisms to uh, <coughs> what I call fail forward. You know, you're not trying to constantly you know, revert back and come up with an excuse of way things fail, but fix the issue roll forward if you can, or at least know where you were to get back to. Uh, secure everything. Uh, in collective is nice because you can put it all behind SSL. Um, you, know, you set up SSH and you can have accountability with the dashboards. Um, super important, especially having work in the enterprise environments with the database systems and financial systems and things like that. And for for where I'm at right now, you know, the initial workflow was building something that's scalable. Uh, handle thousands of nodes, checking in, uh, and that was just the easiest metric to, to see if we could handle uh, the change conversions that we wanted. And this is more of just the philosophy of uh, you know how we approach modules. Modules are the code that you run. Um, at HomeAway, we just uh, you know everyone can be a Puppet developer. We don't restrict. Uh, other than you have to have GitHub access, you know, if you have that, then you can contribute. And I think that's an awesome thing to have. It's a little scary and daunting at times, but uh, if you have your GitHub workflow set up so you can do pull requests and peer review and things like that, and people enjoy the ability to be able to get get things done. The style guide is immensely important. Um, it's on the doc page. Uh, I wouldn't veer from it. Uh, if you have any questions about it, their public lab is happily, you know, happy to have discourse on it. So it's not written in stone, but it is the best place to go to so that you know everyone can be a developer and isn't doing their own, uh, doing the public their own way. Uh, and it gives you some uh, very simple consistency to build from. And the huge thing is testable. Uh, we can't have everyone being a developer if we can't uh, test or verify their modules. Long term, this is just a continuation of workflow. You know, keep it simple. Uh, you know, as I implemented Puppet in certain environments, I didn't go in with M Collective up front. It was just check in, get a node, set up a cron job, have things call home. That was a success. You know, it would never have been a success if I put in M Collective and had to teach people how to orchestrate massive changes. And you know, we we decided we could deal with delayed convergence on some nodes that needed multiple runs. Uh, to accomplish things, so you know these are all just decisions that we made that uh, you know simplify the process, but set out a plan for the future, so people know what you're what you're dealing with now and potentially where you can be, and you can answer these questions. Uh, safe went uh, a step further. Uh, instead of just safe to make changes and have quality control, we make it safe to fail experimentation where you can. Uh, test things. Uh, a huge issue is say you've, you've sat around for a while and you still have like the MySQL 1.0 module and they're on 4 in the Forge, but someone needs that version of the module, but you, you know you got a thousand or two thousand nodes of infrastructure that could potentially be linked to your, the old module. So having a, a process and a methodology to test that and verify it and allow you to experiment before you put it in production is huge. Uh, there's really no standard way to do it. Um, you know, I, there's a lot of talk of R spec, uh, server spec, Beaker, um, but a lot of times you can't test your whole ecosystem. So, um, you know, there was some mention of some cool catalog features that might be coming out soon to make that easier. But safety fail experimentation is pretty much the only way in my mind of framing how you can keep public current, not let it get uh, stuck behind, and let the world pass you by. And scalable has changed from just having thousands of nodes change or call in to we want to do point in time convergence because we're, we're good at the normal stuff. And now when we deploy an app, we want the SQL database to be created first. We want 
the app server to be created next, then we want the security privileges to be put in uh, and orchestrate that. So, uh, you know, and as we've matured, the 30 minute check in has been less of an issue because we're happy with daily reports versus every 30 minutes. Since, uh, a lot of the old auto check-ins were behavior driven where you wanted to capture people making changes manually and, you know, before it was legacy, but as you run the puppet or any configuration management, I find that those are quickly lost behaviors, so no check-in times aren't as important for me as uh, moving towards the point in time conversions. And the huge thing I'm going to repeat with every slide is practice. Um, have a theory of how you get work done, test those theories, experiment, and experiment again. And some of this is just going to be having powwows with the management team, uh, you know, like whipping out a Kanban board or doing the lean copy style and saying, hey, this is where we want to be, this is where we are, how do we get there? Uh, and these are all theories that, you know, they aren't your job as a puppet master to implement puppet, but I don't think puppet can be successful necessarily unless you practice these. Uh, so with that said, uh, this is, you know, I'll talk a little bit about uh, the philosophy of module development and one book that I really love and coming from the point that I'm not a developer, you know, I've got 22 years of being in operations or system and type guy, uh, was a pragmatic programmer book. Uh, I didn't specialize in programming at all, so this gave me some tools that easily translated to what a lot of people at Puppet Labs have been saying over the years in conferences. With us you know, have some style, have some uh, standard ways that you can develop modules and de develop them like any application you would develop internally, you know. They are simple, you know, you don't want to go overboard, there's really not much some, some public code can do, but uh, it's just one of the important things I think to keep in mind as you move forward. Uh, style is a huge thing, uh, you want to make style and quality uh, as part of your quality requirement. Uh, when you're writing modules, if you, if you write a cheesy, crappy module and put it out there, and you productize that, it's going to be hard to get away from that. And then other people are going to find out how to include that in their module and copy and paste that code around, and uh, it just turns into a code ghetto pretty quick. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's not fun. Uh, and the style guide is immensely important here. It is, you know, if people are doing the same things, there's really not much variation that should happen, but you'll be amazed at what some people can come up with. Um, and then knowing when to stop. Um, a lot of people have probably come from Ruby or Python or some other uh, language, and you know, there's, a, there's kind of a philosophy of being a Pythonista and doing things the Python way or being a Rubyist and, and following a very uh, particular uh, thing where when you're a Rubyist or a Pythonist that you can read it, but the system is, they're looking at it going, you know, what is this? You know, can someone translate, you know, what they're trying to do to me? So I will repeat practice, 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 but when I say don't over-optimize, I'm talking about the code itself. You know, you don't have to look for like the purest form of a puppet manifest, to, you know, as your goal of practicing and moving forward. Huge thing is uh, with having such a vast community is you know don't repeat yourself. This is a common thing in programming. Uh, these are just the different types of uh, qualified uh, instances of the dry principle from the book. I mean, use the use the public manifests that are out there. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, the MySQL module, the Postgres. There's a whole bunch of community modules and uh, public supported modules that are super super good at what they do and generally help kept where if you need to make a change, you can go to GitHub uh, and request to make a change. Uh, so, you know, I don't recommend just going to reinvent the wheel uh, for everything that you do. There's a huge community to, to help with that. And code, you know, some of the modules you download in the first thousand lines are documenting all the interfaces. Sometimes that's good and bad. Uh, you know, I like to keep the Low level knowledge in code. If the code is readable, uh, you, know, you won't have to have that first thousand lines of stuff that usually isn't upkept anyway. So, uh, you know, the code should be readable and just write it that way. And I don't think you have to go and document every single, you know, this puppet manifest creates a MySQL DB. You know, we know it's MySQL DB, you know, scope to create. So you don't have to spell things out. Um, and then, 
you know, the last point is foster an environment where it's easier to find things and share things. This is just, you know, the philosophy of CBS having to get hope. Uh, our GitHub searchable, and we wrote a little, we had a, someone write a little Chrome plugin, so when they go to do the Puppet dashboard, they, they click on the source code link, it takes them to the GitHub repo so they can look at code. There's no, there's no firewall preventing anyone from seeing what's in work, what's in progress, what branches are out there. Uh, it's very, you know, work out in the open and uh, flexible in that regard. Uh, this is mostly uh, History, if you follow the style guide, but it used to bite a lot of people in the butt from the two seven to three days, uh, you know, just avoiding global data and watching your scope. Uh, scoping can still be an issue um, where you have modules that need other modules that need other modules that need other modules that when you break one, you know, there's a whole cycle of what breaks. So having this in mind uh, helps you not only debug those things because you know it'll look down the chain, uh, but it also uh, when you're designing a module, uh, you know, don't assume global data uh, other than what's a factor and things like that. Uh, and this is all about managing complexity. Uh, if you build something uh, that's just uh, too many moving parts, you can run away from it. Uh, you got to keep it as simple. Uh, we have 700 or 800 applications that we deploy in environments at home way, so it's a complex environment, but we've kept the infrastructure simple where uh, you know, we've gave the developers some agility and how they can do some of their work, but we provided with rails or a framework of how those apps should interface. And I've done that at you know, other places um, you know, where you don't, I don't necessarily believe you should have a different version of a module assigned to every different node and not you know, I'm kind of a, a big believer in convergence and running nodes through your test stage dev uh, type pipeline <coughs> versus uh, you know, some other configuration tools give you the flexibility to pin versions for specific nodes and stuff. So you know, think about that when you're, when you're developing your environment. You know, if you do use R10K and you pin versions, uh, you know, how are you going to manage which versions are on those environments and upgrade them? Uh, you know, and, with where you're adding complexity in lieu of what you're trying to solve to, uh, you know, you want to create something that was worse than what you started with. Uh, and orthogonal is the term that the uh, pragmatic programmer uses, but other people have called it safe to fail. Uh, this is just huge in keeping everything lock and coupled. Uh, that manifest run where you have modules that depend on other modules, it just makes it super hard to keep things current. It makes it hard to keep your agents updated, your puppet infrastructure updated, because uh, you'll just want to stop in your tracks and not want to deal with it or you know slow down. And then eventually people find ways to work around you and uh, do other things that can be crazier. Uh, designed to be self-contained. Uh, you know some of the modules I love are like the puppet DB modules. A good a good module to look at to see how they're self. -contained. Postgres and things like that. So you can look at those as uh, a good uh, a good baseline to build from. And this is the biggest one for me is the prototype. Uh, I've made the mistake of going to production with you know what I thought was working, but uh, taking what you thought and put it into theory and prototyping it, doing a POC, uh, <coughs> testing out some of the architecture. You know, can you even handle the nodes checking in? testing out uh, new functionality, and then building this in parallel with what you're going to production with so that as you have a product that's supported, you can still prototype in an environment that won't go out and destroy production. Um, it's, it's one of the safe to fail mechanisms that a lot of people will talk about. Um, unless you isolate performance issues, uh, work on changing user, you know, anything that can change what the user expects, and then you can test some of the cool tools in there too. That a lot of open source people are writing to, uh, like Puppet Explorer and some of the other dashboard tools without overloading your public DB <coughs> production. And when you're experimenting, it's it's not about being perfect. You want your experiments to be proving out your theory, uh, testing use cases, or coming up with new ways to get things done. Uh, this is something where you want to be creative. You know. I wouldn't tie these to the quarterly goals or anything like that. This is something that you're going to 10 or 20% time that you do uh, to work 
just being good at um, and in these while you're minimizing what your experiment is, you know, focus on the theory that you take uh, for implementation, you know, this couple like minimize, am I not adding complexity? Um, and then, you know, can I reduce uh, duplication? Uh, do we have multiple things doing the same thing? You know, do I need 50 different user management scripts, or can we consolidate them into one user management module and write like a web service or something, or GPG, you know, hybrid lookups for those. Those are cool things that you can do in experiments uh, that will solve production problems, but not break your production world. And it's just another reference to style guide. And testing uh, the loose, loosely coupled things are easier to test. So if you experiment around with Beaker, RSpec, or Service Spec, Test a module. If you have to build a massive amount of stuff to test a single instance of all those modules, it, is, it can be a, a never-ending process of never ever feeling comfortable with it or never even getting anywhere with it and just kind of giving up on the whole testing idea to begin with. So it's just uh, something to keep in mind. And refactor is just another thing to keep the broken window from taking over your whole system. Uh, for three years, I've noticed, like, you know, we come in, gung ho, get public up and running, but if nobody maintains it, then something cool and shiny is going to come along and someone else is going to start implementing that. And they'll think all of the problems that you have with Puppet were Puppet, and not realize, you know, everything, they didn't change their theory, they didn't experiment, they didn't, they didn't change their business around implementing their configuration management, and they're just going to make the same uh, things, you know, as they move into whatever tools is the new and cool tool. Um, and most importantly, it's, it's code, it's created by this code. Uh, version control, it, test it, refactor, share, forge. Uh, all I'm getting on Twitter and saying, hey, I made a check in on it, and poking the guys from uh, Puddle Labs, and they'll get on and either tell me I was drinking too much beer when I wrote that or whatever it was, and, and get put in. But uh, uh, you know, be participatory. Um, if you just put a pull request out there and don't ever mention anything, it's a good chance they'll just fall on the wayside. But IRC is super popular. Twitter, uh, the Google groups uh, are just invaluable and, and uh, participating with the community. I highly recommend using the boilerplate templates. Um, Puppet ships with one that's all right, and then Gareth, who now works for Puppet Labs, I believe. I uh, wrote a pretty nice one that incorporates a lot of the scaffolding for unit testing and, and uh, Beaker. So it's a good place to start um, to build new modules for. Uh, highly recommended. Uh, he's, uh, you can just search for Gareth on uh, GitHub and you'll find his module like, right at the top. And it's super simple. You import his scaffolding into the <laughs> Puppet, uh, Puppet Master and then you run Puppet Generate in your module name creates that scaffolding for you. Uh, so it's highly recommended to save some time and it gives you just a good framework to build from. And data separation is a huge thing that a lot of people seem to be embracing. Uh, high res is popular with defaults to YAML files. Um, there's some pretty complex uh, mechanisms that people have come up to create hierarchies where they look up values in those YAML files. But uh, I find, you know, you gotta watch how complex you're making things whenever you have a nested YAML lookup of you know, 20 things and how you know which precedence you have on people stomping on each other's configuration uh, things. So it's, it's, it's out there, but I just recommend keeping it simple and remembering not to make it too complex. Uh, the ENC is an external node classifier. Uh, Public PE has its own. Foreman is one that I've used quite a few times. Uh, it provides a slightly different approach to the Puppet Enterprise, uh, and it's open source, so you can try it out, and then we also have a homemade one that uh, is kind of a brute, brute force uh, uh, before Hira, but a little more ruby, ruby-tastic, uh, you can see that we have, and then uh, you know, some people look up a single source of truth, but I haven't really found anyone that, that has that magic uh, uh, trust trusted uh, knowledge base yet. And parameterized classes just are a continuation of the from ENC. Uh, it's just, I wouldn't recommend anything else. Um, you can have default values, but you gotta be careful because 
I'm, I like things to be safe to fail. I don't want them to fail with the wrong value. So sometimes, you know, keep that in mind. Uh, as you're writing a manifest, uh, you know, if uh, someone puts production in there as the default value and you don't override it and you're trying to test it on a test environment, you know, you can custom goofy things. So, but the ability to pass parameters into it through hybrid or your ENC is absolutely the best thing ever. Um, and there's, you know, you can pull them in through, if you use higher rate, you can pull them in through a database or a GPG encrypted uh, data store and things like that. And uh, it's just kind of the, what everybody recommends. And class inheritance is something that gets really crazy. Um, and some of the older modules and just people who are Ruby developers trying to become Puppet developers, um, where they kind of look at uh, classes as inheritable objects or you know, as, uh, as programming methods that they try and just import and consume across the whole ecosystem and not realizing how coupling uh, that makes everything for them. So uh, keep the modules self-referential, uh, inherit locally, and if you have to inherit across the modules, uh, if you use the public scaffolding, you can declare those inheritance that are required uh, in that manifest, so that when people download it and run Puppet uh, module install, it'll say you need these dependencies and satisfy that for them. So it's just something, you know, part of the design of um, making a module <coughs> seamlessly. Um, and code defensively, uh, this is a huge thing where you want things either to fail or work, but know that when it works, it's working the right way. Um, I mean, if you don't support a platform, don't just let your manifest run and throw a bunch of errors, just exit out right then and there. You can say platform unsupported. Uh, it's not quite as much of an issue today as it was before, where uh, you know, everyone just check if you're a Red Hat. They didn't check if you're a Red Hat scientific Linux or Oracle Linux or uh, things like that. And modules would freak out and fail and do that in disastrous and different ways. So it's better if, if you don't explicitly support a platform that you test on the to fail, so if someone tests your module, you don't go as part of the system. Uh, and then just play for the future parser. Uh, it's easy, fairly simple to test against that, but uh, just know that they have some changes in there that you can't. Uh, they got some uh, typing around the variables and things like that, and I have to do more explicit about. And that's all in the, uh, the link there uh, on the new experimental parser is what it is in the open source, but I guess it's formal. And <coughs> no, but we'll, uh, in both the, the next major version of the school source, it'll be the default. It should be out, I don't know, probably this week, maybe next week. Cool. And then, you know, if you're a developer, just keep on practicing. Um, I love Vagrant, building up local images and testing locally. Um, we've actually set up a script where you can download uh, a simple tool and then it actually deploys. Uh, a replica copy of our Puppet Master, Puppet Agents, and on VMs that we've actually kickstarted from those systems. So uh, you can test things in a small, isolated environment without impacting production. Uh, and if you're going to want to work on an airplane or whatever. Uh, and just uh, keep practicing. Uh, and being an operations guy, I have a lot of opinions on how puppets work even more in here and it's been one of those eye-openers that you know, the technical skills haven't really been what made or broke puppet but how I can translate what people wanted and what we could do and then how we can be to make that happen so that it's you know, more thinking you know how do we get work done what should we automate what are our goals uh, lots of thinking, systems thinking ideas, uh, and then I use this uh, sense making framework um, that's super simple. I talked about it a little bit in the, the Dallas uh, meetup, but the puppet generally, I would say, lives in what we call the, the simple domain. And this sense making is just how you look at problems. There's a whole uh, universe of books around this, but uh, you know, when you're starting out, everything is disordered. You don't know where you're going to be, you know. Uh, some things are complex. If it's complex and you have professionals working on it, it's handmade, you know, that's not simple and you probably shouldn't automate it out the door. So this is a little thing that 
And you can just look at this picture, you can think about your work, and you can go, you know what, we have something that's completely irreproducible and it's, it's novel. Um, and, you know, that would be in the chaotic domain, and you're not, you know, solve the things that are causing that novel situation to happen, put it in the simple. But the, the best thing about, you know, looking at this is, the simple domain is where you can automate things, it's where you, you know work can be done consistently, you have a cause and effect, you know, you make a change, you see this, and it's, it's super simple to categorize. Um, but when Puppet blows up, there's this little squiggly thing right here, which is back to chaos. So, you know, if, if you're not practicing, if you're not testing, if you're not validating, things that are simple and that you work through, that you take for granted, uh, when they break, oops, usually send you right back here in a chaos. And so it's, this is a, it's just a simple diagram or kind of concept to think of whenever working through projects, working through work. Uh, you know, if someone comes and says, I want you to automate installing this Oracle ERP system, and you haven't even automated NTP, and you got, you know, 30 guys working on the finance system and two guys working in Puppet, you gotta tell them, you know, how, how can we solve this? It, you know, it's not, it's not something that we can just send, categorize, and respond, or, you know, there, this also teaches you behaviors and how to classify those workloads and people asking for strange things to get done. Um, and that's one thing that we'll be uh, talking about every once in a while at our public meetup, just to get people thinking about making sense of their work. Um, that's a pretty cool thing. And like I said earlier, when when the symbol breaks, usually all hell breaks loose. You know, we've had a, someone check in a fact in GitHub, and the fact went out to every system out there, and it caused every agent to just blow up and stop calling home. Um, it happened on Christmas Eve, I think it was the story. So it's, you know, being on change that someone didn't quite test and the systems weren't set up that we could test it automatically like in a CI pipeline to capture that it would have been super easy if we just had someone do a pull request and it got sent off to Team City and actually build the box because the puppet agent would have failed there because we didn't have uh, you know, people were just saying, oh, it's a simple change, we shouldn't have to go through all that kind of work, and that simple change made lots of people work there holidays. And a lot of people will just jump to infrastructure as code, but I like to steal what Deming says. Um, I look at it as a system of profound knowledge, and Puppet is what helps me know that. And, uh, you know, there's, uh, his, his metaphor is in manufacturing, but I'm more in just, Understanding what Pub is trying to do um, and what my job is, uh, trying to help the business, you know, through accelerating growth, through accelerating change, um, being stable at the same time, but also reporting back people that you know these are our successes, these are our failures, and I'll throw them. I used to throw them on Puppet reports, sell them log into the Puppet dashboard, but uh, you know that didn't translate to the business, it didn't translate to their demands, so I had to learn to. Do turn it into a system of knowledge that people can consume. And you know, the systems approach was a huge thing, understanding that all these people working together, even though they didn't report to me, were, were huge. Um, so you know, appreciate that system. I had to stop fighting it. Um, you know, my best friends with everyone I work with, but uh, when they understand what I'm trying to do and they understand what they're trying to do, we can talk and meet together. This thing is a huge thing, uh, and his system view variation of what is uh, least to quality. Um, when something goes wrong, you can capture that, but when something goes right, how can you repeat that? And that's one of the cool things that you take to, you know, let's puppetize that, that's simple. Let's, let's own that and take that off the slate and move on to the next thing. Um, knowledge is the whole theory and putting all this together. It's not just, you know, I know my nose are checking in. It's I know they're checking in and they're actually satisfying the business requirements and we're keeping up with the cheer and demand. You know, I'm not saying it's gonna be 10 months before I can upgrade Tomcat on your box. You know, we can test those kind of things. And psychology is a huge part of the, the that uh, understanding and knowledge base as well. And, uh, you know, just, uh, it's human systems. You were using Puppet, but Puppet's just solving the technical piece, but you gotta put things together, uh, work through your issues. Um, you know, the biggest thing for me is driving out fear of change. Uh, a lot 
uh, people you know, working at the legacy systems was you know the one once a year deployment uh, all weekend during holidays when everyone else was at home you know uh, and then uh, just get people motivated and uh, so I uh, run out of time but uh, <coughs> I guess my uh, TLDR is just think about how you're getting work done and uh, practice it and just communicate the crap out of that to everyone that you work with. Uh, I love putting things up on the wiki and saying, here, this is the vision of what I'm working on, these are things we can fix. Uh, get feedback from that and then show how I can take that feedback and do it in a contained and controlled way and not destroy production. So that I'm always challenged to do better and uh, experiment around. And yeah, again, uh, we talk about this all the time with the puppet meetups. So if you have any questions, uh, can't catch me at all here. We'll be there tonight and every second Tuesday of the month. And food, drinks, and sodas. Any questions or something before I get chased out? No? Oh, snack time, I guess. We'll have to do questions at the break. Sorry. All right. But thank you so much, Byron.